terrible, terrible injuries. His left side, lost his arm, lost his leg, lost his face, half, half his face and his eye hanging, hanging, just hanging and he's screaming, Annie, over and over, Annie, Annie, Annie. And I help him, I try and help him, I do, but how? How? The injury is too much. So he begs me, begs me to shoot him, me, to shoot him. And I do. The original idea was, was basically because it was the anniversary of the First World War. It felt right that we should do a project about it. And last year I went to um, the Somme, basically, just to visit. I'd never been to the World War I battlefield, to the Greys, whatever. The, the irony is, is that the fields are now just very nondescript fields, but then you see the memorials sort of scattered across the fields, and it just I mean, it takes your breath away, really, the amount of people killed and the names, and it makes it very personal. We had to find the right venue to convey that sense of claustrophobia. I knew the people running the Draper Hall for a number of years, and I thought it was a perfect fit for the first production to be brought here. So they came and visited us and noticed that corridor which runs around inside the hall and they found that it was extremely suitable for their play. We decided with the production that they would have free tickets for our residents because we want our residents to have a fair exposure to theatre. So no prize for them. Our residents have come and have really found inspiration and um, loved the play. And uh, Steve and Suzanne are amazing actors. Because we're dealing with human rights normally and we're, we're talking about people's stories, their life stories and their life experiences. You have to do the research. So of course with the First World Wars there's reams of, of, of books and videos and documentaries and films and, and so basically what you're doing is you're spending a lot of time just trying to be quite specific and picking out specific books that you think are going to be really useful or a specific film. One of the main books we read was a book called Testament of Youth. A woman who it's about Vera Britton. She, she comes from a very specific sort of background just before the, the First World War. Very privileged, very educated and she loses her brother her best friend and a fiance um, in the war. So that was a book we used a lot, especially for Suzanne, the actor, because it gives you everything you need, that being in love, that loss. I love you. I can't imagine a life without you, a future without you. I love you, so you must survive. That's a challenge every night, is to just open up to new audience members, people you don't know, and just share your your story as this woman who works in this hospital and who has all these crazy dreams about her lover. In a dream I'm forced, forced to butcher, forced to dismantle, dismantle his body, must slice away, slice away the damage. Slice deeper, screams, slice deeper, screams, blood, everywhere blood, I'm covered in blood, his blood, but must take the leg, must take it. The screams, insane, must cut, must butcher, but inside, inside I'm overwhelmed, overwhelmed by insanity. It is more like film acting because I think like the, the camera is like your audience like literally like um, a meter in front of you so you can't really hide you know what I mean they, they see everything because it's a small space that, that was pretty much to its limit today um, and it makes it slightly more intense for the audience if you've got more people in there uh, it is intense I mean it is an intense experience there's nowhere to hide really and the stuff that we do is about that is about trying to take people out of the comfort zone and, and give them experience screaming at blood everywhere everywhere screaming at blood screaming at blood screaming at blood nothing in the flood is done in order to shock people though people are shocked because the theme is shocking, war is shocking, we should never get ourselves used to it, that's the whole point.